Welcome back to Vue.js for React Devs. Building on top of the part 1 course, we're going to continue our Vue.js journey with this app. But this time, we'll discuss more about the differences between Vue.js and React.js. As a high-level preview, these are the topics we'll go through. Computed property, props, two-way data binding, and lifecycle hooks. Props will be explained in several different lessons because Vue.js has a very different way of handling callback props and render props, and they're called custom events and slot, respectively. But first, let's talk about the most fundamental difference between Vue and React, and that is the way the React state changes. As you can see, Vue is using ref while React is using useState. At first, you might think these functions are basically the same thing but just with different names. And you'll be right, they're practically the same thing. But in terms of runtime execution, they're very different. As you know, the code inside a React component will get executed again, again, and again as part of the reactive process. But on the other hand, the Vue.js script block only runs once. And that's because Vue.js was implemented differently with the observer pattern. The Vue.js state is basically an object that can be subscribed to, and a subscriber will get notified whenever a state change occurs. For example, the template of a component is an implicit subscriber of the state in that same component. That's why when a state is changed, the template will be executed again. And that's why the script block doesn't need to be run again and again. In the next lesson, we'll see how this observer pattern applies to creating computed properties. In the previous lesson, we talked about that the template is an implicit subscriber of the component state. But what about explicit subscriber? An example of that would be a computed property. We're going to apply that in our app. First, create a new state for the brand ref. Let's say we want to display both the brand name and the product name in the heading. We can simply combine them together like this. It will show up on the page like this. But there's a cleaner way to do this with a computer property. Let's create one called title. The computer function takes a callback as an argument. Inside a function, we're returning a new string based off the values of our brand and product. This will become the value of the computer property. And from now on, whenever brand or product is changed, the value of the title will get recalculated automatically. Since we're using the computed function, we have to import it from view. And finally, in the template, we have the render title. As you can see, accessing the value of title in the template doesn't require using the value property. But if you're accessing the value in the script, you will have to use dot value just like you would with the ref object. In the browser, make sure that it still shows the same title. Without new knowledge of computer property, let's improve the variant selection process. Currently, we're displaying the image using the image ref. And we're updating the image using the update image callback. We're going to improve the code by turning the ref into a computed property. And it will be based on the variance data and a new selected variant ref. And we want the image property. Once again, we're using the variance data with the new ref. This selected variant ref is for keeping track of the index of the currently selected variant. Let's create it right now. This will be a number ref. Let's move this down here. And now when we update the image in update image, we should be updating the new selected variant ref instead. So let's change a function name to update variant. Instead of changing the value of the image, we're changing the value of the selected variant here and we're setting it to the index that we pass into this function. This new index parameter is a number that represents the choice of the variant that the user chooses with the mouse over event. It doesn't get provided to us automatically, so we have to go back to where the v4 directive is used. 
and use the expanded syntax to get the index for each iteration. And with this index variable, we can pass it to the update variant function on mouse over. So now when the mouse over event is triggered, the update variant function will be called with the index. And once the selected variant ref gets updated, the image computed property will be updated automatically. In the browser, make sure that the variant selection feature still works. This new way of updating the variant image is more scalable. Now we can easily make other information dynamic, such as the in-stack or out-of-stack status. Currently, in-stack is a ref with the static value false, and the mouse over event doesn't affect it at all. We can easily refactor in-stack into a computer property just like image and it will get updated based on the selected variant ref. But first, we have to add a new quantity property to each variant. We'll use the quantity to determine the in-stock status of each variant. Now we can remove in-stock as a ref and recreate it as another computed property. We just have to use variants with selected variant as the index along with the new quantity property. So if the quantity is greater than zero, instack will be true, otherwise it will be false. Now both image and instack are computed properties, and we don't have to worry about how to update them, we just need to update the selected variant ref, and both of these computed properties will be updated automatically. In a browser, we're able to switch between two different variants and both the image and instack status will be updated accordingly. The computed function is part of the view 3 composition API, so you can also use it inside a composable. We'll see how to do that in a future lesson. The composition API also provides a few other useful functions for reacting to state changes, such as watch and watch effect. Sometimes we want to be notified of a state change, but not necessarily to create a computed property based on it. The watch function can help you to run a callback whenever a particular state is changed. There's no need to return anything from this callback function. Watch effect is similar to watch, but you don't have to specify what to watch. All the subscribable objects that appear inside the callback will be subscribed to automatically. This is useful for subscribing to multiple states, and you don't have to manually list out all of them. But different from watch, watch effect will run the callback once from the start before any state change. On the other hand, watch will only run the callback when the source is changed. In the next two lessons, we'll talk about how components communicate with each other via props and custom events.